like you know like there's a channel on this issue so this is the feature of the, of the link for uh, february 22nd yeah uh and uh, we were discussing i guess uh, uh dynamics in like uh lists and communities yes and like um on, uh, i guess you mentioned this problem or, or i guess just fact uh, peter of like having like i think it was something like having a designated channel for a topic uh, but uh, the channel being not where people were essentially so maybe some disconnect between there's, different facets or um there's a um uh we ogm was originally kind of founded around uh, a google group mailing list mm -hmm. um and Jerry's got a lot of, of love and affection for email lists in general um, <laughs> as, as, a, as a communication medium. Uh, uh, CSC Mattermost was actually basically founded out of frustration with the, the list. Um, and, and it, you know, there's a lot of, so my observation of mailing lists, um, let me sort of rant on a little bit. My observation of mailing lists are they're, they're easy to dominate. Um, they're easy for a few people to pick up and dominate. Um, uh, you wouldn't be surprised that most of the time it's by guys, but it's by anybody who who talks loud and doesn't listen very much, right? Um, so they get they get skewed. So the the noisy people take over the list, and then the quiet people move away from the list because it's not a discussion anymore. It's you know a few people ranting at at each other. Um, so. Um, Isn't that true of every medium? I wonder. It's, <laughs> it's less true of chat, uh, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, Slack or Mattermost or Discord or something like that. It's harder to take over a room because somebody else can just make a, a room a channel next door, right? And mm -hmm. you you end up with a little bit more democratic, um, not not technically democratic, but kind of democratic. You end up with um, the law of two feet, shuffling people to the right place, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I don't want to listen to the big omnibus discussion with the people bloviating, it turns out there's, you know, a few of the people drift over and we're talking about something that is really interesting to me, right? Fascinating, whatever, right? To us, right? Yeah. So, so, so people find their own spaces or they build them. Uh, so yeah. uh, I guess the, the button will be a, a tool that allows people to develop uh, ancillary spaces, maybe. Yes. Um, and then, and then I think there are just some design choices and email lists that are also bad. Um, uh, we never, we used to have a uh, long, long, long time ago, we used to have netiquette that said, um, you know, for instance, uh, change your subject lines, um, trim all the junk out of your, out of your message before you send it, you know, um, between people not getting schooled and netiquette coming into, onto the web and and I, I actually blame Gmail for a lot of this. Gmail, the client hides all the quote stuff, but that's only good in Gmail. Everybody else has to see all the junk that, that the Gmail people are continuing to accrete onto this message. So the messages get to be thousands of lines long of, you know, quote stuff. Um, yeah. I, so you're describing I, like so something like eternal September, like, a, or like a- A, a little bit, you know? yeah. yeah. And and a lot of it is the tool, you know, the, the the tool was never improved past or it wasn't improved so gmail is a good example of a tool where they improved the the ux the ui of of it for those users but that convention isn't spread across multiple clients right so mm -hmm. i see all of the quote crap in my client mm -hmm. because i'm not using gmail you know so in the olden days when we used to do you know when mime came out for instance i'm not mime is kind of good and bad it's it's you know moderately well designed it's not great it's okay but every bit everybody did mime at once right so you could send mime messages for everybody um we kind of lost that and so um we got uh um uh balkanization of of the client situation the way people use email and things like that mm -hmm. so the 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 interfaces like work to they and you know the subject line is meaningless kind of um and it's still there so some people kind of use the subject line most people don't use the subject line um, it's hard to do moderation well. Um, you can either have a moderated list or not a moderated list, but you can't cherry pick out. You know, it's like mm -hmm. it, it's just there's a bunch of stuff that never got fixed in email that 
because Slack designed designed it uh, de novo, uh, modular the fact that they were just copying IRC. Slack designed a bunch of stuff where it's manageable. You know, it gets managed. You can do things like rename channels or or whatever. You know, it, it it's better maintained. It's it's easier to maintain the conversation space. So. Um, so for a couple reasons, email is still the lingua franca of, or the, you know, the tool, the tool of, you know, least common denominator tool, which is a good thing. So you can reach everybody. The bad thing is that for conversational medium, it's pretty poor and we have better stuff nowadays. But then you get people who go, yeah, I'll use your, you know, I'll use Discord, or I'll use Mattermost, or I'll use Slack. But that doesn't cover everybody. There's a bunch of people still stuck in their email box. Completely separately, by the way. I, so I, what I did on the OGM list, I, I said, I, not with any of the intent of changing everybody. It's like, I, I can imagine a better kind of listserv thing where lists are a lot more like channels and they're lightweight and easy to easy to set up and, and tear down. And they're easy to find you know, other channels with kind of similar people. Um, I called that mini list. Um, another, uh, Jack Park made a great observation about email. Um, it's, it's a universal message client for any system that uses email, which is not very many that nowadays, but once he pipes stuff into Gmail, um, for him, he knows how to search ev ev all of the messages, right? So instead mm -hmm. of going to discord and Twitter and Slack and whatever, mm -hmm. and trying to find a message. You know, if you shovel it all through your universal interface, then, you know, you've got your tools that you like to use, you know, Gmail search or whatever. Yeah, yeah the universal, yeah, right. The, the universal uh, interface, universal field aspect is very valuable, maybe underexploited uh, even nowadays by uh, Gmail, <laughs> even though it, it tries to be that. And of course, the, like, the, the corporation is aligned, uh, presumably with us, uh, with Ago. But like I've seen, like I, so, so Aram brought up a matrix, um, a, I think, or yeah, it happened. Um, and I know of at least a few projects we are trying to like build the one inbox on matrix, essentially, sort of to which has like all these goodies, like uh, you know rooms, like uh, you, you can present uh, like a native like a Slack-like uh, threaded uh, interface, but also it is well designed to like support bridges. So yeah, so so I guess the, the, the approach I'm dreaming of, and I have other people in this generation, is define a new uh, like uh, common platform uh, or protocol, and then just build bridges into that one, and you know like only pay like uh, or the, on the order of n integrations instead of like n square or whatever you need to do for like a full mesh. Uh, but then again, you know if if we choose matrix and the next community chooses a Slack. We're back to square one, and that's the issue with like coordination. Yeah. Um, and why we come back to email, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I mean, it, yeah. I just I find that email is very difficult to manage, at least for me personally. I think a lot of the, and this is something I found in the W three C stuff that I did, uh, which is that there is a big generational gap on using email mm -hmm. uh, basically once you cross over into uh, the millennials and after they don't want things to go through email at all um, and then anyone older than the millennial generation still prefers email and this is obviously a generalization but i think part of the problem is that um Right, people who, people my age see email as a must monitor in a way that I don't think some people do. Um, but uh, in the sense that like, if somebody's sending you an email that's of import and you have to respond immediately. So the idea of a casual messaging process going through email like no longer works, right? The perception is that's a, a texting thing now, um, or, you know, Slack or Discord or something like that. I think that, I mean, the, I, I mentioned this other thing, the big problem with Slack is it's not open source and the mm -hmm. data in it is not open. Like 
A lot of people pull data out of Slack to do stuff, but it's technically against the license, right? Like um, you're not allowed to copy chats out of Slack. Um, and in fact, I have um, some academic friends who are like incredibly depressed about the move of open source projects out of IRC to Slack. Oh, these cores. What? Right. Or Discord as well. I've seen or that, like, Discord, a lot of yeah. Yeah, or Discord. Um, because it means that where previously they could do academic analysis on the conversations that are happening, um, you can't on Slack. The Slack terms of service state you are not allowed to copy content out of Slack. The chats in Slack are not allowed to be extracted from Slack in any way. Obviously, a lot of people just ignore it. But if you're an academic doing a longitudinal study and you're publishing and you want to say, like, here's common terms in this open source project, or here's how things get answered, question formulation, or here's the composition of contributors over time, um, none of that can be done with IR, with Slack anymore, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because you can't publish an academic study and be like, I decided to violate the terms of service of Slack. Here's my study about what I got from that. Doesn't work. I mean, it would be cool. I mean, I think people should do that maybe, but of course like uh, when the career is on the line, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I just I just really dislike, I think the, the problem with a lot of messaging services versus email is like I said, my perception is if someone sends me an email, I have to respond Whereas I want my messaging for a chat service or like something that happens like email groups to be something I go to, not that comes to me, which is right. a very significant distinction. Uh, I know like you could have filters. I have like 1200 filters in Gmail, um, but like it's still, it's still difficult to manage in email, I think. Yeah, so I, I've seen like the two more promising things I've seen, uh, I mean, promising from my particular point of view is like Matrix, like I said, in particular, like people were building like, uh, I think Glitter, which is Matrix, there's like a uh, different like interfaces using the Matrix protocol. Element is quite all right out of the box. And, uh, and then on the activity path side, which, you know, I know it's like a different direction, and it's more like, but it's more like an inbox, um, you know, uh, e email-like inbox oriented uh, protocol. Uh, with actors and so on, uh, um, there's like Lemmy, right? Which is like a federated uh, Reddit, which uh, aims to implement essentially like a distributed message board or like a, a message board that can federate at least. Um, and, you know, for some discussions, I guess, I, when you were discussing also like groups, we were discussing like email groups, I remember the old experiences in like this PHP, PHP BB business uh, like a uh, bulletin board bulletin boards back in the year 2000 uh, how they were mostly like they mostly moved to what credit um, I, I would guess um, and uh, and you know in the, if you think about it also like uh, like it was the same kind of move from something you could run yourself to a centralized platform like a world garden um, so this pattern coming up uh, everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of interesting, right? Because like, I feel like a lot, some forums moved to Reddit, but there were a lot of forums that did stuff that doesn't fit in Reddit well. Right. And I don't know. I feel like they just disappeared. Well, Stack like, Exchange as well. Yeah, but like, I, mm -hmm. I don't see Stack, Stack Exchange as a board mm -hmm. in like the BBS sense. But mm -hmm. I don't think it's a forum in how forums were run in like the right. 2000s to 2010s. Right. Um, like something right, awful. You're not, yeah, yeah, like something right. awful or maybe there was a wide variety of them. But like right. you just look at like the number of sites running, for, for example, like PHPBB or any of the other common bulletin board um, systems that still run um, or that still are kept up. Like it's a significant drop. It's just not very common anymore. I do feel like there are certain conversations that as a result don't happen anymore. Um, like I remember one of the really popular things to do 
in the 2000s forum culture was you'd run like like threads of uh, games or narrative fiction or something like that. Um, like tabletop games, I mean. Um, like those sort of, that sort of activity is not really fit in a chat and it doesn't really fit in Reddit. Where does it go? It seems to me like all of those places where I saw that happening in the past are mostly gone. Um, that sort of asynchronous play. Um, mm. And I, I, think it, I think it's just gone now, which is weird to me. So it feels, it feels like, um, I, and I'm going to go back a little bit to the models the way, I, the way I describe them. Like there are shiny nuggets, which are little objects of content. Uh, some of them are in streams, which are called mailing lists. Some of them are in streams, which are called Slack channels. Some of them are in other kinds of streams. And each of us has different preferences as to when and how we'd like to see them and how we'd like to deal with them. And the tools don't give us a lot of choice about where to put them or how to do them. Each tool has kind of a bunch of default settings about, well, you kind of do it this way. Uh, so with mailing lists like Google Groups or Yahoo Groups or whatever, they show up in your email inbox because that's the default setting. You could go over to the website. You could turn off email notifications. You could go over to the website and you could browse messages, but I'm not sure anybody does that. Mm -hmm. um, and then for me, if I put a filter on a mailing list, the moment I'm filtering it into some other folder in my Gmail client, which is my default email client, I never go look in that folder. Like that, I might as well have unsubscribed from the list, but every now and then I remember and I open it up and I like just browse a little bit and go back. Uh, but that's my, that's, that's my volume knob. It's like filter and get, uh, unsubscribe filter or keep it in the general inbox, in which case every day it's part of my sweep to sort of get rid of stuff or at least to, to have opened it. And none of these things, as we talk about all the different platforms, each new platform means you have to sign up for a new account, figure out a new habit, add that account to your sweep is sort of what I call this every day. I did a brief, uh, I did a YouTube short about like, what is your daily sweep? Um, and that's really cumbersome. So why can't we, and I think some of these things, maybe like Element and Riot or whatever else, I don't know, some of these sound like they're trying to deconstruct this problem and give us each more choice to arrange these nuggets in streams in ways that are more amenable to our own work practices, which sounds to me like a great thumbs up. Like, like that sounds terrific. Let's do, let's do that. Or am I, am I assuming too much from some of these projects? Because it would be great to melt some of these different platforms into um, yes. a set of offers we can sort of customize. And then I don't want every user to have to customize their platform, but rather uh, uh, Tiago Forte could say, hey, I've gone and customized this cool set of, of, of Tinker Toy platforms into this framework because this is how I like to work. If you like my workflow, just use this arrangement. And then and, you know, we could do others. But then each nugget is visible, available, quotable, promotable, demotable, whatever, I don't know. And then we can sort of figure out what is what are access controls around around the nuggets. Interesting. Yeah, my, my understanding is that there's like a, so okay, so one of the th we'll things of uh, building something like a cross poster uh, to a matrix or to one of the newer protocols is that uh, I know for a fact that you can run gateways that are two way, so you can you can interact with other platforms like Telegram or or Matrix or so on, just completely remotely. Because the protocol is rich enough to say to be able to represent people who are elsewhere, for example. So then you can message from Matrix, for example, you can uh, build a workflow that messages someone in particular in a different platform, and the bridges will will handle that. It's not like one way, like email, where you know it's like you get a dump and then you have to click through and go back to the platform to interact. So uh, so it's a richer experience, and to some extent, it goes to what you're saying, uh, Jerry, that it, it will let us build something that is more dynamic and according to our uh, preferences. The other yeah. Thing that, yeah. No, sorry. Ahead. Oh, just real quick. I was going to note, like the indie web community has that exact thing where they have an instance where you can sign on to their chat using uh, Matrix, IRC, Discord. I think that's it. I think it's Matrix, IRC, and Discord. There might be one more system that they allow. So it's definitely very possible. Nobody seems to have documented how they did it um, code-wise, but it looks very cool, and I'd love to replicate it. 
right in the web yeah and, uh, and so here's where like i sometimes want to like just do like a uh like crash course of uh in the web uh with uh with chris <laughs> right uh, uh yes that's, that's interesting i will love, 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 love to see it uh, i guess on the other uh, yeah on the sharing sweeps or like i guess uh, that's something like personal workflows or or sits um so for me and this is like just what springs in my mind we can we need to discuss now of course like anything like this but like uh for me like uh browser extensions browser automation are like actually relatively underdeveloped when it comes to this um and there's been uh, recently i saw something quite um uh, promising uh selling social co-op um essentially like extensions developed where uh, you can actually take control of your like let the user take control of the, of the data uh regardless of what the which actually apis or internal tools the the websites um uh offer so essentially what i have dreamed of which is if you go to twitter and you see a, a, a poll a timeline you, uh, in your time and you, you drive with polls those you save the, the extension save them for you because you know they were for you know the, the, the interaction between two people so you can say i want to save a copy of that and maybe even like the information for the person and so on so like siphon and like um i think in general like automating the browser could yield essentially any any workflow and we could share those right share automation at the, at the browser level uh but the, i don't think the incentives are currently set up to, uh, to enable that um, uh, so maybe a community, it could be community run, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be corporation run. Uh, we can also pause on this topic, which was sort of happened randomly from the pre conversation Pete and I were having and head to other territory that anybody else uh, would love to cover when with us together here. Yeah. Um, or we could check in a little bit and see where we are in order to discover what we'd like to talk about. Yeah. Check-ins then? check in sound good. Anyone want to go first? Um, I'm happy to go first then. Um, Whoever has the most colorful background goes first. I like that. I like that a lot. I have too busy a background, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> um, and everything has a story. I need, I need like a clickable GIF, a click, you know, uh, background wallpaper so you can just say, oh, what's that? Um, Only and then change your outfit too. Exactly. And then if you clicked on the map, it should zoom you to, oh, sweet. Love that. Uh, now I'm, I'm lost. I'm totally mesmerized. <laughs> and then if you click on the map, it should zoom into the map and then you would see where April has traveled to, you know, during her lifetime. And then you could go from there to other places. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, so the, uh, a couple things top of mind for me. One is um, broadly, what what kind of structure do I need to find in order to be a steward of the shared memory for humans? Uh, closer to things, uh, I'm still very interested in note note sharing and what does that mean and how do we do it? And and Flancy, I keep wanting to find some time to sit with you and, and actually sort of do that. So I'll, let me know when you have a window or, yes. or two to, to just sit down and just figure that out together. Awesome. Um, yeah. And then, we thanks. And then I'm trying to record more what I call brain drops or short, basically I'm using YouTube shorts because I am no, not literate at TikTok whatsoever. And I can at least handle sort of the YouTube interface and, and post something. Uh, but um, I'm liking the 60 second constraint of trying to say something useful. And then I'm trying also to figure out how to weave those together into a broader uh, Indra's net uh of content on different topics and yesterday I, yet, yesterday i was in a really fun conversation uh about quakers and the history of quakerism where i know a whole bunch of nuggets that i've never recorded and i'm like hmm okay i should i should just sit down for a half hour and record a bunch of nuggets and then sit and we even post them uh, into the medium and see what that does just as a as a, as a base uh, and then last um, I'm working with Paul Roney to reconstitute the Tools for Thinking podcast, and he's very interested in the history of computing, in particular, the early seminal visionary documents like Memex and Ted Nelson's uh, writings on hypertext and, uh, and so forth. Uh, 
Uh, so that's a body of interesting stuff. Pete and I are in a group of called Sense Doing that meets on Mondays, which is focused right now on either masking or air filtration or what would a healthy society do as policies around a pandemic. That's a body of work. And then there are other conversations and other sorts of things that might also make a corpus or a body of work to share notes on and to uh, to basically collaborate on. So I'm, I'm trying to do for all of these or one of these, the note sharing that I'm talking about in under the broader context of uh, instead of just like throwing links onto a, this ties back to the start of this conversation here, instead of just throwing, hey, this is a cool link onto a mailing list. Um, how do we actually like nurture the big fungus together so that there's resources left afterward that make more sense after everybody's curation, everybody's addition to the resource? Sorry for a long check-in, but that's all that's all in my head right now that matters that might be relevant to FOTL. Nice. Awesome. Um, I can go next if you want. Uh, so, I mean, top of my mind is uh, a lot of stuff happening at the, at the day job, uh, which uh, is only tangentially related, I guess. Uh, so, you know, like we have this protest and like, uh, probably won't work uh, for much, but you know, like there's also, a, I, not word directly, but it, it may, you know, strengthen the ties between employees and so on. And, the class consciousness, which is nice, but then like dealing also with like uh, planning. I'm doing planning for like my uh, uh, possible like for future one in which I'm laid off or I quit because <laughs> of this, and the other in which I don't. And like uh, I don't know if you, I, I probably mentioned this to a few of you, but like my my uh, day job dream has always been to actually influence the company positively, <laughs> like sort of like uh, you know finding. I always you know, like nudging the iceberg in some directions <laughs> or like just like finding like a, a good, a good uh, fulcrum, <laughs> you know, uh, which seems to become less and less likely as time goes on. But, you know, I'm uh, 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 not me. So I'm writing a few things internally to see if that, you know, echoes in the right people and, you know, has some probability of like compounding. Unlikely, but seems worth doing. In particular, in this one more week we have until we find uh, where we are laid off. So essentially, my plan until the, until next week when this happens, layoffs seem likely to be announced either on Monday or Friday next week. Uh, I'm just gonna dedicate part of my time. I mean, honestly, I'm still working on projects, which doesn't even it's a piece weird, but you know that's what happens when there's an issue. Uh, but also, I'm gonna, I am actually investing a lot of time just trying to think about these issues and see if I can spot like a way of framing what I want to say that uh, can resonate, actually resonate with a number of people. So, you know, communication work. Um, and then on the outside, I mean, uh, and more to the topic uh, or like one topic, uh, I started writing something, which a lot of my stories uh, start with, I started writing something and very few with I, uh, with I finished writing. Uh, yes, but like, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, but the, this something is uh, beyond, uh, be, it's either be, uh, called Beyond Markdown and Git or uh, Beyond Markup and Git, uh, depending on you know, how generic it turns out to be. And it sort of like dives into like what I've been calling our 2023 with, with some friends. Uh, we're doing like yearly planning and you know it's it's fun something to say like oh that's our 2025. I mean maybe not come to pass, but you know like sort of like to market things, uh, and also like uh, making them some uh, you know like if you go a few years into the future, they are like uh, you can uh, drink more freely, I guess. Uh, yeah. So working on that, but essentially the idea being you know what's next. I mean, it, what's next in building a, a knowledge commons? I guess uh, with like mi the minimum viable tools, assuming we have one built on Marlon and Git, which is strictly speaking, like uh, not, it hasn't yet happened yet, but I just like, I'm just, just for a change, I'm assuming that that, that has happened when, uh, when writing this, you know, what is the next thing we, we will need there uh, to like really uh, empower them, the commons. Uh, so don't be fork maybe, and like, it's like, actually, well, let's try to like actually grow the commons and like uh, interconnect it. Uh, you know, like how it, you know, essentially be the big fungus. Uh, and uh, and on the other side, like how can we empower it and actually like work on the next version? 
um, uh, letting go of some of the limitations uh, of the original approach. Yeah, so that's pretty much it, I think. So it's like a fork. It's two forks, you know, like uh, uh, the, the future forking twice, which seems uh, fun. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, that's another revolution, of course, as you show. Uh, so uh, who wants to go next? I can go next. Um, yeah, so um, on the uh, professional work front, uh, trying to push some blog posts through our PR people. Uh, it, it's very annoying. Every uh, like I, I'm at the point in my career where every blog post I write needs to be checked with PR, but I'm not. If I was a little bit lower, they wouldn't care, and if I was a little higher, they trust me. But I'm at the exact wrong point where it all. Ha if it talks about anything that could possibly have to do mm. with the company. It all has to go through them. So uh, if it's spending too much time on that, which is very unfortunate, because um, I have two or three long blog posts I'd like to publish that have to do with advertising, media, and privacy. And that's the hot spot um, that wow. PR is concerned about. So that's been fun. Um, a lot of privacy stuff in general happening right now. Um, beyond that, I am uh, continuing to work on the context.center stuff and specifically the timelines. Um, I'm very interested in, uh, I finally got some of the JSON API stuff out that I wanted. So in theory, anyone could, uh, you know, query up one of the timelines, get a stack of JSON and bring it on to their own site, uh, of course. The format is only my own, so uh, not, nothing there that's particularly um, calling back to any other metadata format. It's just what's easiest uh, and probably should at some point change that. Um, my goal is to finally get that to the point where I push the actual timelines public and the open source and not really open source of the code, but just opening the code to the public. I mean, it's already open to the public, but it's not merged in. Um, next month, uh, the goal being to turn the actual code that generates the timeline into an 11T plugin um, that makes it really easy for anyone to do timelines with static sites. Um, this is like built off of uh, Molly White's code, uh, who did um, uh, everything. Cryptocurrency is going great. Why am I forgetting this? It is going great. Let me pull up the thing. Web3 uh, is going great. She's my colleague great. here in Boston. She's great. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, she is great. Um, I talked to her very early on in this project. Um, about how she set it up and the code that she had put up there. Um, and I have been building sort of on top of her original code ever since. We have a few- um, Do you have a link? That's a little, yeah, I mean, it, the timelines are not public yet. My timelines are not public ah, yet. Cool. I just have the, uh, the code that I'm working on here. Um, but if you are curious, let's pull up what is um, actually published. Um, here we go. Uh, this is the devlog, and this is the branch, um, which is probably part of the problem is I'm going to like actually publish the timelines before the code is really readable. So probably don't want to dive into that code quite yet. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I've actually been very happy with the progress and I think it'll be ready to push out next month. One of the things that are particularly satisfying that I wasn't sure I'd be able to do was generating share images. Um, one of the things that I think are really great about how uh, Molly uses 
uh, Web3 is going just great is that she can take a screenshot of each block and then share that. And that is sort of dynamic and, and branded in a way that is better than just like a share link as it is. Um, and so the site uh, now auto gens shareable blocks like that. Um, oh, that's yeah, nice. yeah. Yeah, that's the other one. And then um, she helped someone, I can't remember who's running it, um, do one for Twitter as well. So it basically looks exactly like the Twitter one. Um, I didn't change much from Molly's styles. It's more about how everything is generated, how it leverages the auto-generated um, events. It also has a really cool compatibility with um, the other project I'm working on, the Contexter, which is the link card generator and styler and archiver so that if your entire like what I I'd like to do is have timelines that are just links to major stories about a thing um, which is a di another different use case um and it allows you to just put in the link if you're running contexter it archives it it creates the shareable block but then it integrates the shareable block into the actual timeline post and all of that's working. Um, it's just a few last touches uh, that need to get worked out before um, I could actually start publishing timelines, and including the fact that apparently I'm, I've somehow got a naming problem with this. Just, just classic for a hobby project. <laughs> um, okay, uh, and yeah, that's sort of been the priority as of late. Um, the goal being to get these all these things up to the point where, you know, we can start sharing them back and forth. And if we want to share the links, we can and um, have it generate an RSS feed to make it accessible that way. Um, they'll probably start publishing the timelines before that happens. Awesome. Thank you so much. I mean, it's I'm super, this also brings the links. Yeah, yeah. That's that. That's a big thing. Trying to make it so that it helps show links and make them more easily shareable, um, right. while archiving them. Yeah, I'm not a designer, so it's all Molly's design. It's really just building a whole bunch of interesting build processes to make it work and do a whole bunch of more flexible things with Eleven T. Molly eventually evolved her timeline stuff into a. I think it's Next.js and React, um, which is cool. I just, I'd use Next.js at work. I don't want to use it for my for my personal project. Um, Aron, thanks for sharing that. It helped me weave together a whole bunch of things that were very disparate in my brain. And um, uh, seeing Molly's timeline was really clarifying, really super useful. I, and I, I love timelines. I think they're a fabulous way of organizing, organizing stuff. Are you familiar with the Latch framework that Richard Saul Worman put out? No. Uh, what does that do? Uh, Methods of organization? Exactly. So, uh, so Worman says in his book, Information Anxiety 2, that there are just a few primitive ways of organizing info with the acronym Latch. Location, alphabets, time, categories, and hierarchies. Um, and hierarchies is nice and broad. Categories covers a whole bunch of stuff, but he, but these are the ways to organize. And I, I, not a formalist or a logician or or anything like that, so I have no idea. But I like it a lot. Um, yeah, random is is nice too, and probably ought to be in there someplace. Um, serendipity, uh, or something like that. Latches. We need an E. Um, extraterrestrials. No, that wouldn't work. Anyway. Um, so timelines are one of these majors, which which is a, a, a great thing. And one of my wish list items for the brain, for example, since it's time stamping stuff and since content nodes, thoughts uh, would many of them would have dates, would be to be able to visualize the stuff that I've you know curated in there through timelines in the way that you're doing. So I'm very interested in the bridge from what I'm doing back to what you're building. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important. I think especially for understanding events. Like the problem is that we get very unhinged from history and understanding what's going on in the media. And too many of the approaches to solve this are just like 
date ordering or like date ordering in like a really abstract way where it gets mixed in with other things or not clear linkages or not clear hierarchy over time. Um, I think a timeline sort of perfects that. And one of the problems I've had in the past with approaching timelines is they're always left to right, which does not work on the web. And so mm -hmm. when I saw Molly's timeline, I was like, ah, it, it's responsive, it works up and down, it's built for the web, it's thinking about how people will actually use it. Um, I want to build a little like skip um, thing where you can like select a day or select a month or a year. Um, and the other thing that's sort of the big difference for me um, in my approach is that every timeline item should be its own URL. Um, Molly has a skip link sort of thing in place. They're not normal skip links. It's like a clever thing she's doing with React um, that lets these things sort of stand as individual URLs. But I think like for what I want, for what I personally want to accomplish, they should have be individual pages and they should be indexed as individual pages by search. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that's a big part of it, right? Because once you can destructure it, you can restructure it with other stuff. Um, yeah, so to answer your question, Matthew, it's um, in the philosophy of the context center, every topic that I want to be a timeline is its own timeline. So there, I, just to start off, like there's one timeline that's COVID and there's one timeline that's, um, you know, uh, what was the other one I was doing? But like a different topic. So certain <laughs> topics are just link collections and certain topics are timelines depending on what makes sense to me for that topic. Yeah, yeah, that would be really cool. And it gets into that concept of merging things together, right? The other, the, the way that it works is um, once you understand that you can have any individual timeline item as a standalone item, then it becomes very easy to think about how you could extend that same methodology to remix timeline items from other sources. Um, yeah, it, the, Jerry, there um, is a lot of conversation in journalism about five or six years ago about atomic journalism, which led to Circa, if you remember that platform. Um, but basically, that also sort of approached this idea um, that, that like, this is the proper format for it where you're scrolling down and each one's a little atom of a news thing. Um, and the other thing that's really cool is there's a supporting schema.org timeline methodology um, that is intended for live blogging. Yeah, that's exactly, the, that is a good reference. Um, it no longer exists, unfortunately, but a similar style of idea. And the problem is like, it was difficult to build. Um, yeah, I'm, it was difficult to build. It was difficult to mod. Interesting, I don't think I have seen this particular one. Um, but right, like, yeah. So there's a couple of problems in here that I remember. I did read this. The Verge just changed its design, right? The problem of lousy sharing is solved by taking Molly's concepts of these screenshots of the items. Um, the idea of generalist is like irrelevant to me. Um, and like cold and rational and little original journalism, the these are problems that come from how aggregation is not done properly in a mechanical sense on the web. And therefore these systems of monetization and attribution decredit it. Um, I was actually just talking with, um, I ended up going to, uh, what was it? Decent Social um, and meeting up with a group that calls itself ESC for maybe end or maybe escape surveillance capitalism. Um, and I ended up meeting back up. I can't remember who, I think it was you, Peter, who um, suggested I talk with Michael Grossman. Um, so I ended up meeting back up with Michael Grossman there and we ended up having a conversation about factor and, um, and aggregation. Um, and that's like a big piece of it that I'm thinking about and trying to solve for 
like to do aggregation in a way that mechanical systems understand that you're an aggregator versus like a content fee for like just a list of links and not exactly always the thing that it understands. Um, I, I was in social as well. It was, I'm sorry, I, I was going to say, I thought it was a very interesting event. And I think there are a lot of the talks in there like have a lot to do with the, what we, the thing we discuss, about, we discuss here. Um, I think there's a crypt pad with links to all the sessions. Well, this is the juiciest check-in round. Uh, Pete, go ahead. Thank you. Aaron, that was awesome. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip for today, or at least for right now, but thanks. SJ and Matthew, leads you. Yes, you. Okay. Well, I'm not even quite sure. I, I, I'm i sorry I, I arrived late. I'm not 100%. I mean, we don't do check-ins quite so much in the Europe as we do as you do in America. So does what it, are you... Does what it make you, you uncomfortable? No. Curious and a little bit confounded or lost. Uh, last week, for example, at the OGM meeting, I was completely lost. I didn't know what was going on. But then I only come to these meetings once every really five or six. So, you know, I'm not really, I'm a bit of a slow learner. If, if are we just sort of putting out there where we are, what we're doing, how we're feeling? Is that the idea? Roughly. I mean, what, what, is, this? what, what is in your ambit that is, uh, that is sort of fellowship of the linky? Uh, mm. and, and it might be one thing, it might be like a whole thing. It might be that something you've been chewing on for the last couple of months really fits well in this conversation. And you just want to report on that thing. Could be any of those, any of the above, just by okay. means of putting something on the table. Projects us. and questions, yep. like things you've been, things you go, like there should be burning, <laughs> nagging um, questions. There... Yeah. <laughs> okay. So with me, I guess what's top of my mind at the moment are two very closely related things one is the massive wiki project aaron thank you for joining in man that was really cool i was really i was it was quite an event for me to see oh somebody's actually done the thing and you know created their profile and that was that really meant a lot thank you very much that was that gave that gave me a real smile um so thanks for that we're gonna have a meeting about this so I'm, we're gonna have a massive wiki meeting about that on friday so i don't want to spend too much time about that um in my professional life um i recently thought i had i was doing quite well in business development because a couple of clients fell from the sky but then i had to say no to one to say yes to the other and you know how that ends with uh, the other saying oh we've got some administrative difficulty so i'm back to the um i'm back to the hunt a bit i've still got one client the joint research center i'm still doing a lot of work with them but i always want to have more than one because then i get a little bit more freedom i think and a little more security so um i would really love to get actually some sort of um paid gig for doing what i do in my free time which is think about collective intelligence and i've been working on thinking about that for a long time i mean um on january the first i published these five blog posts one of them is about the massive wiki project a pilot project as a as a demonstration pilot of what a future decentralized collective intelligence ecosystem could look like i call it a minimum viable ecosystem i don't know whether anybody read the any of the posts but um uh and for me getting that out on the first of journey that was the culmination of a good year's thinking writing and rewriting because originally it was going to be a white paper to support a cryptocurrency and then it was going to be a chapter in a book and then i thought no it's not going to be any of these things um it's just going to be a set of blog posts and i'm going to put it out there and if if nobody's interested, then I guess nobody's interested. I'm going to have to go off and do something else uh, because I can't continue to spend all of my time, which should be spent partly on side projects and partly on, you know, business development and working for paying clients. I can't continue to do that. So, um, yeah, would um, would love to talk about that at some point. That's what's the top of mind for me right now. Um, I was interested, Flansin. I don't know whether you saw my... Eduardo, sorry. Um, my email to you about what would 
what would and what would Agora and um, Massive Wiki and, and My Hub look like if we mashed them all together? That sounds amazing. You, well, it would be it would be amazing, but I, I we really need to you know we need to, we would need to spend a lot of time figuring out you know how that would work and even how we're going to figure out how that would work. And I'd love to do it, but if you're facing potential layoffs at Google, then this is probably not the time that you want to be doing that. Well, I'm not sure either because like I have five months of holidays set up. So even if they leave me off. Oh, the joy of being an employee, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Five months. Five months, yeah. Plus any severance they give, which may not be much here. So I may be looking into six months for just, I mean, presumably looking for a job, but. <laughs> That's like a whole seed round right there. I mean, I'm, I will I will burn that uh, that seed, that seed, yeah. It's like, a, just like, see what, where it leads, maybe. Mm. Just have fun. The, the yeah. other tools to mix in in there are Factor and Catalyst. Factor from Michael Grossman and Catalyst from Vincent. Okay, I don't know. Those. Can we boost up a list? Factor, Catalyst, uh, Massive Wiki, uh, in my hub, and I wanna. Yeah. Anything else? Of, uh, what is sounds, the name of it sounds like we're witches or warlocks with a cauldron and we just pour in all of these different ingredients and see, see what beast comes up you know perhaps it would be useful to figure out what we want to do first sort of throw <laughs> on the on the floor of, of the forest and let the mycorrhiza take it <laughs> let the big fungus uh, bring it yeah <laughs> i'll add my own like archiving tools to this but like I don't have a you know specific format that I am interested in forcing on anyone. I am very glad to see the people that have a more established system here, figure out what they require, uh, and, and then shape towards that. Yeah. If you look at the blog posts I mentioned, um, you find share yeah, those links. Share the blog post yeah, links. Sure. <laughs> I have uh, done. I'll, I'll do it again. Um, if we had this conversation two or three years ago, I would have been trying to force my hub down your throat, right? Because it was this thing I just launched three years ago and I wanted everybody to join up. It was going to be a, a centralized platform and, you know, it was going to be a, I was going to make a living out of, out of building that without wanting to become a billionaire, of course. But anyway, it would have been that was my focus. And the last three years have been me figuring out that in fact it my hub itself isn't really very important it might there might be a continuation of it in the future one day but what is important is that this ecosystem appears where things like that can flourish if people want them to flourish so you know if they can use they can use um, massive wiki they can use an agora they could use a hub they could use a blog they could have a Substack or whatever but all of the outputs which is pieces of knowledge can be remixed and, and found easily and people can collaborate easily on it and they have ridiculously simple um group forming and, and and things like that so i've gone you know i'm sort of like diluting away my 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 hub and just thinking about you know what would the ecosystem look like and for me massive wiki looks is more interesting than my hub right now um, which is a bit strange but there you are anyway i'll uh, share my link because i mean there's five posts but you don't need to read all of them there's one link there's one short post which summarizes three more which are the three canonical posts and then there's the one about massive wiki i'll just share the first one they're all linked together how was that for a check-in? Was that okay? That was amazing. I would say that's a 10. I'm holding up my 10 card. Ah, I guess. Um, SJ, care to check in? I started in the in the comments. Uh, I'm I'm running an, an art project. When we started the Knowledge Futures group, we had a nice uh, we bought an auto pen and we signed a whole bunch of cards with the auto pen with a combination of everyone's signatures. And we got everyone who came to the kickoff party to fill out a little card with what they would dreamed of for the future of knowledge. So now, this time I want to mail cards to uh, all of the people whose approaches I appreciate. And we'll find some way to have a, both a physical and a digital demonstration um, by the anniversary, which will be in July. There's going to be an in-person meeting in April, April 3rd to 6th in New York. So A, if anyone's in New York, um, come hang out, but B, uh, try to send the cards back by them. Um, thank you for that address. Other people email me addresses. Wonderful. 
Um, that's it. All the rest of my update is about large language models, and we can talk about that next time. We should have a session on it. I think. Uh, I think we should we should try the fellowship of the generative, and imagine what the how that fits into all the other kinds of links. Um, is the event listed somewhere? I would love to. I'm in New York, so. Oh, great! Um, it is not listed. It is just the Knowledge Futures meeting. It's not. It's not really a public event, but um, I'll be around. There will be satellite events. Um, ping me. I'm afraid I, I have a, a hard. I, I have an interview that I have to give right now. So, um, ping me, or we can talk about it next week. Nice. When is this event taking place? Because I might be in New York in the first week of May. Oh, wow. I uh, know it'll be the first.